Hi there, my name is Emma and today I'll be showing you how to uh, plant a blue fairy echeveria succulent plant. Um, so it's just a little tutorial on how to get it potted once you have it in your hands. Um, so some fun facts about echeverias is they're a little bit um, picky. So um, most of them like to be in cooler climates and have bright indirect sunlight or uh, filter indirect sunlight. Um, but there are a few uh, exceptions that do like bright direct sunlight. Um, when you do have plants like that that are Echeveria, you should ensure that they are only getting uh, about a quarter of the day like in shade and the rest in the sun and then at night um, it, it doesn't have any sun. So uh, this doesn't like full sunlight all day, every day. There are some Echeveria plants that do, um, but for this, this one I will be taking care of it by bringing it inside and putting it in bright indirect sunlight. Um, so to get that effect you would be putting it by a window um, either north or south that gets lots of bright light during the day and if you have curtains in the morning just pulling them back as soon as you wake up so that this gets some sunlight and then you know at night closing them up um, and it, it makes them real happy so I will get to uh, showing you how to plant this um, my mom got me these really cute planters they're little owls um, they're the perfect size for succulents and I'm showing you this one because I already uh, put rocks in the other one but this has a bottom with a hole which is great because you want drainage for succulents because they like well draining soil and they want to uh, they want moisture but they don't want to be wet um, they, you want well draining soil that way water is not sitting in there um, because succulents are really prone to root rot so what I'm doing for this um, because it's the type of planter it is you can leave it like this, it's completely fine, and just put rocks in for drainage, cause, or not, because personally I do like to put rocks for drainage because it can hold a little bit more moisture and um, kind of regulates the moisture a little bit better, and it also um, helps to prevent the, the roots from sitting in a the bottom of the planter where there might be residual water and getting root rot. So you, you don't necessarily have to do this, but this is what I do. I have these little mesh pieces, and I put those in to cover the hole on the bottom it fell but <laughs> to, to kind of cover the hole on the bottom if you can see that um, before I put the rocks and the reason I do that is so soil doesn't fall off the bottom uh, as easily as it normally would with just the hole so that, that was just a demonstration pot but I'm gonna be potting it in this little owl fella um, I like him because he's tall and he'll look like he has a really cool blue haircut so <laughs> as you can see the Blue Fairy Echeveria isn't actually blue, it's more of a green color, but because it's got this white powder over the top of it, which is a protectant layer, um, it, it looks more blue, uh, which I think is gorgeous. Um, so I already have rocks in this fella and the mesh screen. So the next step is putting uh, soil, and I always recommend for succulents, cactus, um, air plants, that you use a well-draining um, cactus, cit citrus, succulent soil, and you can find these at pretty much any home gardening store or online, um, but it, it, doesn't, it doesn't matter what brand you use, you can even make your own with uh, compost uh, with like pumice and rocks, that way it's got a little bit of soil for moisture and nutrients, but then lots of rocks um, and pumice to help drainage, or you can even make your own using regular potting soil with lots of rocks and pumice as well. Um, there's tons of, of like recipes on how to make your own succulent soil, so I would totally check that resource out online. Um, there's plenty of people who have their own little blend that works really well. I personally don't make my own succulent soil, so I wouldn't be the person to ask, but maybe in the future I will. So uh, I'll keep you guys updated on that one, but let's get to it. Now, you can use a, um, a trowel, but I personally just like to use another little planter to pour it in uh, because I feel like it gets more, more soil in there faster. So because this is such a small pot, I don't really need to fill it up that much. You want to leave about three-fourths um, so that you can kind of gauge where where the plant goes to see because there's so much soil that if I put them in the top of the planter, he fits just about. Um, all that's left to do for this plant is to put uh, just a little bit more soil around the top and then rocks. As you guys probably already know if you've watched my first video, you know that I like to use the soil, the leftover soil from the plant. This one doesn't come with very much, 
Um, so I'm gonna pour in what there is and then just fill the rest with the soil that I have. And again, you can use a little trowel, but I like to use my hands. I'm, I'm a little hippie like that, I guess. <laughs> so, and uh, when first planting, you might want to pat it down just a little bit. And if the plant, so I ordered this online, so the plant came in the mail. If the plant has little dry leaves, just pick them off. If they're um, dry but still kind of attached, just twist them gently. Um, this just kind of helps facilitate new growth at the bottom of the plant later on um, by removing the, the dead leaves. You don't necessarily have to do this because it, it will take care of it itself as well, but I just like to do it because I think it, it makes it a little easier for the plant. Alrighty. So as you're, you're potting, you can make sure that the plant is well situated. Um, and you don't want the plant to be like up high in the pot. You kind of want it to be almost flush with the pot because if it's up high, you have a chance of your plant growing too tall um, for the pot and like kind of falling over. Or you could have a situation where you water it and the water goes everywhere instead of straight down through the drainage. Um, so that's just a, a little thing to keep in mind. Uh, also in potting, the, the situation of your plant, because right now the front of the plant is like this, um, but I planted in kind of to the side. The way that I'll correct this is placing this end where it's facing away towards a window so that the plant shifts slowly over that way and then I'll just rotate it to ensure that it stays um, even and then it, it, it will lay flat eventually. All right, so I've finished putting in the soil and you don't necessarily have to do anything else, but if you're gonna be taking this inside like I will be, I recommend putting rocks around the edge of your plant because uh, fruit flies like to live in soil, especially if you're keeping it outside. And fruit flies are harmless, but they are a little bit annoying and they will get in your food and your drinks. So what I recommend is putting rocks around because it prevents the fruit fly eggs from hatching and it prevents fruit flies from um, like burrowing in the soil and laying eggs. So it's not a full, full guarantee, but it is something that you can do kind of as a preventative measure. So again, the same rocks that I put at the bottom, I like to take those. And because this is a small planter, I like to take the very, very small rocks and put those along the edge. They fill up even to the corners because um, any area that is free, a fruit fly can get in or get out and we don't really want that. Um, we do love our fruit flies, they're good for the environment and they help with the ecosystem, but not in our house. <laughs> so we don't want that. Outside we don't have to worry about this as much um, because it's just the way nature goes. But if you're inside and you don't want them inside, then it's the way to, to take care of it as best as you can. You can also spray this with vinegar water, but you want a very small amount of vinegar in the water because vinegar can also kill plants um, and you want to use it sparingly. Uh, yeah. Another method I heard of to get rid of fruit flies is putting a, um, a plastic cup with saran wrap over it and inside the plastic cup is apple cider vinegar with water and some dish soap and that will trap fruit flies in it um, and they will, because the soap is in the water, there's no surface tension and they'll drown. Um, so that is kind of a more aggressive way you can get rid of fruit flies in your home, uh, if you so choose, um, so I thought I'd bring it up. So I've got the little rocks around the edge of my plant now, so hopefully that will ward off any fruit flies that, they're, that they uh, might have in the soil. So there's my tutorial for my blue fairy Echeveria. Uh, hopefully it was helpful and you enjoyed it. Uh, please comment down below if you have any questions or suggestions. I'd love to hear them. And I hope you have a wonderful day. Bye.